terms of what endogenous DMT is doing, um, you know, it could be responsible for some of the aberrant mental states that we all undergo every day, like dreams, uh, or um, maybe not so often, like near-death states or mystical states. Um, it could be involved, maybe, if there's too much produced or if it's not metabolized quickly enough in uh, psychopathological states like psychosis. Um, you know, it also could be involved in just the mediation of everyday perceptual awareness, kind of like I was talking about with its being transported into the brain against the, against the blood-brain barrier. You know, the, uh, the, um, the brain wouldn't expend energy to get, you know, DMT into its confines unless there was some, you know, necessary function for DMT in everyday brain function. You know, so, um, so, um, so it is interesting to speculate about is DMT involved in kind of the homeostasis of our normal, you know, kind of window of, of uh, everyday perceptual reality. Um, you know, like too much gets pretty psychedelic, and uh, not enough gets flat, depressing, you know, boring, two-dimensional. You know, so there could be some, you know, sort of regulation there.